So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology, Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus versus iPhone 13 Pro Max full comparison. Now the reason for this comparison is, you know, these phones are actually a lot closer in the actual feel, the actual shape of them. The design is a little bit closer, I feel like, between these two and the Galaxy S22 Ultra, which is more of a rectangle. The Galaxy S22 Plus is a little bit cheaper and a little bit smaller as well. This phone is at $999. The iPhone 13 Pro Max is coming in at right around $1,100, but it's not as low as the S22 Plus. But you can get the S22 Plus with a little bit more storage, you know, for around the same price as the starting 13 Pro Max. All right, so let's talk about the build, the body, the design between these two. Now, first off, right off the bat, I gotta tell you, the Galaxy S22 Plus is way lighter than the iPhone 13 Pro Max. This phone right here tips the scales at over 240, or well, right around 240 grams. So this phone is heavy. Plus, this device right here does have itself over 4,300 milliamp hour battery here. And this phone does come in at a pretty thin 7.7 .7 millimeters. The cameras do stick off the body quite a bit there. And it's a beautiful, gorgeous looking phone, the iPhone 13 Pro Max. But I'm constantly impressed when I pick up the Galaxy S22 Plus by how sleek and light and having a larger battery than that phone right there. I love the Galaxy S22 Plus for having a larger battery than the 13 Pro Max. Thinner camera, similar kind of feel, flat display, squared kind of edges with the curve in the corners, and it still comes in at 195 grams and 0.1 millimeters thinner than the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So this is 7.6 millimeters. They both also have IP68 dust and water resistance, and both of them do feature Gorilla Glass Victus. However, the S22 Plus has Gorilla Glass Victus Plus. In addition, they both feel quite similar on the back, having that matte type glass. In addition, on the Galaxy S22 Plus, you have a cleaner camera housing. As the camera housing is glass here, it can get smudgy on the 13 Pro Max. At the end of the day, between these two, it's actually quite close, even though these phones are a different price point. The S22 Plus feels premium and sleek, whereas I'd say the iPhone 13 Pro Max feels heavy and luxurious. Uh, either way, I think they're actually quite competitive, even though this is not the Ultra line. I'd like to see Samsung bring this type of design to the Ultra line, uh, maybe in the future, unless you know people still are enjoying the rectangle. I think this, type of design with this, you know, with all the best they can throw at it would still succeed even with an S Pen. So maybe they'll do that in the future. Let me know if you agree with that or you're more into the rectangular S22 Ultra style. Let me know down below. Now, when it comes to their displays, it's kind of a thing where we have some pros to the S22 Plus and some pros to the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Well, let's talk about their similarities. Both of them are OLED displays on board here, and they both do have 120 hertz panels. So you're not gonna be left in the dust, you know, when it comes to being 120 hertz. In addition, where they are similar is that they're both large displays, so you're not gonna have a small panel on either. They're also the same aspect ratio, 19.59, on board here for both of them. Where they differ is that the Galaxy S22 Plus is a sleeker, closer to an all body at 88.3% screen to body ratio. On here, we do have 87.4, so that just means there's a little more bezel action right here, mostly, the notch being much more large than the punch hole. So you feel like you have more of an all screen on the Galaxy. They also differ in that the iPhone 13 Pro Max has sharper text. This thing has over 458 pixels per inch. And this is where Samsung, I think, drops the ball on the Galaxy S22 Plus. While most people won't care, this is a 1080p display at 393 pixels per inch. If you put this side by side with the S22 Ultra or the 13 Pro Max, you'll see that it's not quite as sharp in the panel. However, where it does strike back is that it's a very beautifully saturated panel. In addition, you can still hit those ridiculous levels of brightness at 1750 nits, and it is controllable through this extra brightness setting, where it will basically sear your eyes. So I don't really recommend this indoors, but if you need it outdoors and you need it in a pinch, you will get amazing brightness levels on here. Most people are gonna be looking at this display throughout their day at a distance, and they probably won't even notice that it's not quite as sharp as something like the iPhone 13 Pro Max. But the iPhone 13 Pro Max has this very naturally balanced look to it. It's, it's accurate, it's beautiful, it has some color to it, it's not over punchy, but 
it looks good and it's always super smooth so there we there you go for the iphone 13 pro max you'll have to deal with that smaller notch over the iphone 12 but it's not quite as sleek as the punch hole. On the whole, if I had to pick one for display, I would go with the 13 Pro Max just because I think it's sharper and it's a little smoother. Now, when it comes to storage, we don't gotta talk long about this. Apple wins, it can go to one terabyte. The Samsung device can top out only at 256 gig. Samsung says if you want more storage, you gotta go to the Ultra phone. They didn't actually say that. That's this figure of speech. They're definitely um, asking you to upgrade if you want one terabyte because they don't have this right here in one terabyte. So go with the iPhone if you want more storage, the Samsung will top out at 256 gig here. So when it comes to their software, Samsung is promising four years of updates. Uh, one thing that annoys me though, is that they're promising these great software updates. I've had these phones, the S22s for near a month now, and they've had a few glitches here and there, and I still don't see a software update. So. You know, I wanna see updates quicker, Samsung. I know you're promising four years, but let's get these rolled out across the board. I know some regions get them first, but why am I still on the January security patch on a brand new phone? It's almost April already. So I'm not trying to complain, but you know, sometimes you gotta, you gotta be honest in how you feel. And honestly, I'm telling you, Apple just launched 15.4. They have longer software support and they also give you even better like time that it comes out it comes out quicker like it's just there like you're getting betas every like week you're getting like software updates all the time so apple still wins in software updates software in general you know it's the grid of icons app library here you can add widgets and do some customizations to the wallpaper it's not much different you know than ever you can unlock with a mask now with the iphone that's pretty cool Samsung is Samsung. You're getting customization. You're getting the in-display fingerprint sensor. You're getting decks on board. You're getting the ability to theme out your phone, change your custom grid of icons on the home screen, put apps wherever you want them on the home screen. You can create multiple folders really easily just by going right here, selecting different applications and just quickly creating a folder. There's a lot of different ways to operate this phone. The control center up here and the iPhone on this side is quite a bit different looking than the quick panel on the Samsung. The Samsung allows you to customize all that stuff right there. You can add it and have different apps, move them out of the place. You'll still have to go into the settings to do it on the iPhone. And again, of course, with Samsung, you will get yourself these split screen modes, the edge panel, stuff like that. So it's more of a multitasking beast, a more practical type of phone usage. Whereas the iPhone is more of an everyday, easy to use. You don't even think about it. Once you get used to it, it's just easy. Like if you're into easy, I think you might prefer Apple. And Samsung is very easy here as well if you've been using it a long time. But at the same time, they do have more stuff to play around with. So I find myself just more entertained by the software. It's more fun to use. Whereas Apple is just purely strictly iOS. It's got it's got what it, it's got what it's got and you just kind of go about your day and just use it. But with Samsung I can go around and play with some advanced features. I can go play around with all the theming. I can play around with the Google stuff, the Samsung stuff, the linking with Microsoft stuff. There's just more going on out of the box for the Samsung. But software update wise, it's Apple. If you care about practicality, multitasking, split screen, it's Samsung here. So let's talk about performance. Geekbench, Samsung has been in the news for Geekbench scores. They've been banning them from the scores due to some game optimization services that have been throttling the phones a little. Let me tell you the truth about how they actually perform in the real world. The Samsung and the Apple devices are so similar. They both have 120 hertz. They both feel very smooth. The average Joe would never know which one is faster. However, if you've used iPhone and then you use the Samsung, like the newer ones, you'll notice the Samsung is a little bit slower when it comes to like certain animations and stuff. It just looks a little choppier. The iPhone is a little bit smoother day to day with pretty much everything. And that shows Apple's a little bit ahead here in the optimization. Samsung is getting better at One UI and I think it's one of the best Android experiences it probably is the best Android experience on the market. So definitely a great competitor here, but Apple still wins out in performance. It's just smoother, it's faster, and it's more optimized. Apps load better, but I'm still early in the, the process of reviewing these S22s. So I'm gonna update this video soon 
once you know samsung brings the updates to the s22 line i will be covering them in new speed test updated speed tests to see how they perform against iphones when we st finally st start seeing some updates i'm ready for those deciding to pick up the s22 plus or the 13 pro max in battery life i can tell you uh, the galaxy s22 plus is surprisingly good six and a half to seven hours screen time i find in addition to that it drains pretty good throughout the day it's an easy to get through a day phone here the iPhone 13 Pro Max, however, is an easy one and a half, two day phone if you're light on it too easily. So the iPhone 13 Pro Max is the winner. Let's just put it that way. At the same time, you know, I can get around nine hours, 10 hours sometimes if I really lower the brightness on the 13 Pro Max. Can't reach that here. Better standby time for the 13 Pro Max, faster charging times for the Samsung. Either way, this actually, even though the iPhone 13 Pro Max is technically the better phone here, the Samsung is pretty solid. I don't think you'll be disappointed either way, but if you want the ultimate battery life, again, it's hard to beat this 13 Pro Max. Apple really went to town with this one, and this is the way to go. But if you charge in a car, you got a fast charger at home, you're at the office, whatever, you got, you got, you got chargers, bro. Samsung will be fine for you. And this X area is where the Samsung cannot take the win here, but I still don't think it's something that would deter you from buying it, and that's the camera. We have a triple camera set up here for the Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus. And I did take some comparison sample photos. You'll see them in a minute here. But we have 1X, we have 0.6X, and we don't have to go through everything like we did in the S22 Ultra video, but it does have a 10 megapixel front-facing camera. Here's all your features. It's advanced. You know, you have portrait video, all that stuff, and everything's right there in the camera for you. It's similar to the S21 Plus camera setup, just a little bit better, 8K 24 FPS, is capable 4K 60. You know, it, Apple though here, this is their top of the line camera system. So um, this is actually closer to the S22 Ultra. You have a macro mode. Again, no macro mode there for the S22 Plus 0.5X, but I think the S22 Plus does hold its own against this phone just because it has quite a good video mode. But I find the video mode on here to be better at focus. It just looks a little clear. And overall, I found the iPhone 13 Pro Max to be the better camera setup between these two. It just feels a little more premium, a little bit higher end than that one. That one's more like the S22, which is not their highest end camera. That would be, again, their S22 Ultra. But anyway, I still took some samples between these two. Go ahead and take a look and let me know your thoughts on which one came out on top. In terms of audio, I found the Samsung phone to get louder, but I found the iPhone to get a little bit clearer. So it's like a little bit better sound to me at the highest end, but with the Dolby Atmos turned on, I love the Samsung's sound. It was very loud. So I'm calling them about a draw here in audio. It really doesn't matter. Neither of these have headphone jacks. They both have very fast Bluetooth connections. Apple connects to its own stuff very quick, AirPods and stuff like that. And then if you wanna talk about faster Bluetooth speeds overall, it's the Samsung with its Bluetooth 5.2. So connecting to you know non-Apple headphones is fast as heck on the Galaxy S22 Plus. So either way, audio is solid on both of them. Phone call quality, on the other hand, is no issue for either of these phones. They both have Qualcomm on board, which means the chips are strong, very good signal strength. The Samsung phone and the iPhone are always sitting at high bars. Check out those bars right there, five bars, and it's like this pretty much everywhere I go. Four bars at the minimum, and if I get in a really bad area, two or three. But for the most part, great signal strength, 
great phone call quality on both of these. And they both support a very fast 5G. One thing I do want to mention, though, is that between these two, you are choosing the ecosystem, the Samsung ecosystem or the Apple ecosystem with the Apple Watch, the MacBook Pro, the Air iPad, the AirPods you know, everything. And over here, you have the new Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 series. You have Galaxy Watch. You have the Galaxy Buds. There's a lot going on here for the Samsung device as well. Here's your Galaxy Buds. You know, you got your Galaxy Watch you can check out over here. It's a Gal Galaxy Watch 4. I got some accessories on it. Again, the ecosystems are pretty good on both sides, but I think Apple's is a little bit more together, cohesive, mostly because it has the MacBook. This is still using a Windows laptop. At the end of the day, this one has Dex though, so you don't even need a computer. You can just use your phone as a computer. In conclusion, if you're on the fence here between these two, I think the 13 Pro Max is the one here. For $100 more, that does give you a little higher quality camera. It gives you a more competitive with the higher quality Ultra, Samsung S22 Ultra, slightly bigger screen here, 6.7 inch versus 6.6 .6 inch. And this phone also does have a more premium feel and smoother performance than the S22 Plus. But I think the S22 Plus is a great value and it's no chump compared to the iPhone 13 Pro Max, especially if you want something that's more the shape of that device. However, it's not quite enough to take down the 13 Pro Max. And I think people who like this shape are gonna be a little bit disappointed if they wanted the all out spec champ like you'll find on the S22 Ultra. They're like, I want this design and I want that you know, all those specs. But if you can sacrifice a few of those things and you want to save yourself a hundred bucks here on the S22 Plus, you can get yourself this and have, you know, like this middle place between the S22 Ultra and the iPhone 13 Pro. Because on Apple's side, you'll have to get the smaller phone for this price point. Over here, you get nearly this size, but not nearly as much spec. But in this comparison, I do think the 13 Pro Max is the winner here. You'll still be happy though, if you want that shape of the iPhone, but you wanna stick with Samsung and you want this larger display on the left. Let me know your thoughts between both of these right here. Are you gonna pick up the S22 Plus? Are you gonna pick up the 13 Pro Max? Are you waiting on your green iPhone? Are you waiting on your SE3? I will have those on the channel as well, so be subscribed for that. Nick here, be sure to be well. I'll catch you all in the next episode and peace.